Uh, we have this breaking news. White House Chief of Staff Mick Mulvaney is making all kinds of waves after he spoke at the Milken Conference in Los Angeles and firmly announced China trade talks will not go on forever. I think at some point in any negotiation, you realize, okay, we're close to getting something done, so we're going to keep going. Uh, on the other hand, at some point, you just throw your hands up and say, you know, this is never going to get anywhere. Um, and I think you'll know one way or the other in the next couple of weeks. Deal or no deal with China, two weeks and time is up. Now, whether that is the case, day two of trade talks are starting shortly in Beijing, where top U.S. officials are plotting their next move. According to uh, insiders here, one of the biggest sticking points is getting rid of the tariffs that the U.S. and China had slapped on each other. But our next guest says this trade deal is the wrong way to go about fixing our relationship with China. Instead, the U.S. should, quote, focus on fixing itself. AEI resident scholar and China Global Investment Tracker author Derek Scissors is the man behind this theory. He's also the China Beige Book chief economist. Uh, are you saying, sir, that we should not try to pursue and push China to become a fair global partner and instead focus on some types of issues we have here? Oh, we should definitely push China to become a fair partner. We just can't trust them to do that by signing an agreement. Um, they have very strong incentives maybe to keep the agreement for a year, year and a half, then break it in the next term. Uh, so that's why the U.S. also has to be moving on our own policies, which we're not doing. Stephen Mnuchin, the Treasury Secretary, literally just said he is very hopeful that a good quality deal uh, will come about very soon. I, two weeks. Do you think the two-week level is viable for a good deal? Well, I don't think we can get a good deal until the U.S. has the right uh, policies in place here. But I do think we're going to get a deal announced toward the end of next week. That's where we've been heading for about the past month. And when we get that deal, uh, we're going to get the administration saying the Chinese are going to buy a lot of goods. They're going to protect IP. A lot of people are going to be skeptical about that because that China's track record is so poor. And they're going to be right. Um, the, the deal will hold, as I said, for about a year and a half. And then it will fall apart. In what way do you believe it will fall apart? Well, the two main parts of the deal are Chinese, more Chinese purchases of U.S. Uh, goods to balance the trade relationship and better mm -hmm. Chinese protection of IP. On the purchases, the Chinese just don't have the money. Uh, people aren't used to thinking that way, but they ran a $410 billion merchandise trade surplus with the U.S. last year, and they still saw a net outflow of dollars. You cut a couple hundred billion dollars off that, they have a balance of payments crisis. They can't afford it. On IP, China has a, a huge set, two dozen large state monopolies where there's no innovation because state-owned monopoly companies don't innovate. That's right. Which means they need to steal and coerce that intellectual property where they have state monopolies, which means they're not going to protect American IP in those areas. So the way the Chinese system is set up, they're not going to be able to afford to buy U.S. goods for very long, and they're not going to be able to afford to protect U.S. IP for very long. But, Derek, you know, you say the U.S. should put the talks on hold. You know, the president has, has really staked his flag and his claim on this, saying that it is time to hold their feet to the fire or at least shine a very harsh spotlight on all that the Chinese do to steal our ideas. You're right. They, they do have a lot of trouble innovating on their own. They could certainly replicate. They're very good at copying. But don't you think that this is something he should go gangbusters on, which he has been doing with his own team? Well, I, I don't see him going gangbusters. I see this, this negotiation going on for a long time. But there's been one major American action against Chinese IP theft during the Trump administration, which is now over two years old. One. The administration itself says China steals maybe $225 billion worth a year of U.S. IP. It's taken action against one company. We're relying on negotiating with China to stop IP theft. That, to me, is a really bad bet. Okay, uh, I, I, I am with you. I do not trust that China will be very upfront and honest and then come through with it. You know, you need that aggressive verification. Will we at least get some ability to get on the ground in China to have our people verify? They can send their people here, too, to verify, the president said. Two-way street here, but we need to make sure they're not doing that. 
Well, remember what kind of country China is. Secretary Mnuchin has talked about an enforcement office. I mean, what, what is this enforcement office going to do? Is it going to have free ability to travel in China where Chinese citizens don't have free ability to travel? Will it be able to surprise chi bad Chinese actors who are probably under orders from the Chinese government to steal IP? Uh, I find that very, very hard to believe. Uh, the administration's other response is that it will keep tariffs on China until we see better IP behavior. That's a better bet. Um, if the U.S. has an enforcement mechanism in hand, that I would trust a lot okay. more than sending U.S. Uh, experts to Beijing when they're not going to be allowed to do their job. It, it has happened since the beginning of trade and time. They steal our ideas. But we'll be watching it. An interesting perspective, Derek. Thank you very much. Derek Scissors. Thank you. Of the AEI.